Welcome back to these aren't the nerds you're looking for. Uh, this is Kevin Horde here. Lorenzo Fon over here. Hey, Lorenzo. How you doing? Doing well. Yeah. Thanks for asking. So yeah. this is a weekly uh, deep dive podcast into the Clone Wars uh, in chronological order, one episode at a time. So this week we are on episode... Uh, sorry, season one, episode seven. It's entitled Duel of the Droids. This is the second part of a little two-parter that we started up last week. Production code on this is 106. Originally released on uh, November 14th of 2008. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, indeed. All right. What do we got going on in this one? Uh, you want to start with the fortune cookie? Yeah. That? I do have the fortune cookie. It says you... Hold on to friends by keeping your heart a little softer than your head. Aw. How sweet. Aw. <laughs> it's one of the longer fortune cookies we've had yet. Yes. In terms of word count. Yeah. Yes. They're fairly succinct usually, but, yeah. Not that this one's terribly long, but still. Yeah, I agree. I do remember the other, the fortune cookie for the last episode saying something about friends. So, we got, that's, uh, that's our tie-in between... Uh, downfall of the droid and duel of the droids is friendship it sounds like so which after the last episode not to get too far back into it but as we left things off in the last episode that fortune cookie didn't really tie in to anything no it didn't really make, not, make yeah much sense not that that episode tied in with itself in any coherent form, but anyways, moving on. We've already talked about that last week. Do you have any predictions of how this fortune cookie is going to uh, relate? Is Are we going to feel feel something out of this? Keep your head soft. Don't be hard-headed thing. I don't... I It's, it's hard to tell based on the trajectory of where we left off last episode. Okay. Right, because... Uh, if if the intent is you know keep a soft heart but like a a hard head to push through things you know yeah like like to me this this fortune cookie is the idea that don't be binary regarding like making decisions between your heart or your head like you have to have a mix right right but based on last week's episode where Anakin was making kind of dumb decisions mm -hmm. but throwing 100 percent of his heart into finding r2 you know like if if we're trying to make a connection between like this fortune cookie and like the theme of last week's episode or even last week's fortune cookie with the theme of last week's episode it based on what we can gather from character actions in no way to me does that connect you know yeah I'm going to call Filoni baloney on both of these fortune cookies. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting that the two fortune cookies relate they relate to each, to other. each other. These episodes uh supposedly relate to each other. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um but the fortune cookies don't seem to relate to the episodes. No, not at all. And I guess we'll just have to kind of get into this and and formulate our opinion along the way the yeah. newsreel of this is precisely a previously on like that's all it is it mm -hmm. doesn't recast week's anything else other than last week's episode mm -hmm. um in looking through this i came up with a little bit of info that i thought was interesting we said the production code on this was 106 the mm -hmm. production code on downfall of a droid i think is 104 103, Downfall of Droid. Hmm. I don't have the production code on this page. I think there's two in between, right? Nope, there's three in between. So, Duel of the Droids is 106. Downfall of a Droid is 102, as far as production goes. In between, we have the last two sections of the Clone Wars theatrical release. And the episode that actually comes out chronologically after... This one, which is Bombad huh. Jedi, which we'll be talking about next week. So it's odd to me that when you've got this two part story arc, yeah, that you're developing other things in between. 
are we sure see because we don't know much about these production codes though do we like well i would in terms of right i guess i am making a big assumption saying that you know like production 101 is the first story that was worked on and 102 is the second story that was worked on but uh, how else could you interpret that or read that well i'm imagining you know um we're gonna go on a slight tangent here that's what we do um, but from a production television production standpoint, so like let's think of a live action show, yeah. Okay. So you have all the writers go into a room for like two weeks, mm-hmm. and they're sitting there, and with a first season show, you know they're they're mapping out what the season's going to do overall, right? Right. So like at the start of this season, we have this interaction and then by like at the beginning of walking dead the dude wakes up and at the end of it we need to him, have him like getting out of atlanta right right and then you sit there you go okay how many episodes do we have six great so then you start kind of layering in like okay so what are big things he could do well he could meet people are we doing that first episode second episode third episode right you know, i'm with you what are we doing so You hammer that out, right? And then once you kind of get a... You you start with a big outline for the season. Then you start hammering in the outlines for each episode. Okay. Then from there on out, you go, okay, we have these six episodes. Here's where it needs to go. Then you hire specific writers for each episode to start writing the actual specific like dialogue and actions and all that shit, right? So... That will start happening. Does that mean for a uh, single camera show like Walking Dead that they're going to film all of episode one, complete, move on to episode two, complete, episode three? For the most part, probably, but there's going to if if you already know, say, like a show like that where you're filming far ahead. Okay. If you know, like, he's going to start at the hospital, do a thing, then go back to the hospital. You can film that second hospital section at the same time. Oh, completely. Yes, exactly. So, I don't know what that does to production codes, per se. But what I'm kind of imagining with Clone Wars is, like, they were hammering out all these details. But in terms of, like, when one would get started up was just in relation to readiness of script, perhaps. And the teams that were working on animating each episode, right? It's going to be a little less linear because you might under, like you might know that, Hey, this one's going to be a more animation intensive episode. Okay. Like we have to render out a bunch of shit over here. So let's start production on a downfall of a droid. Mm -hmm. Start that. And then we're going to finish up the script for the second half of theatrical. And then now we know theatrical is a theatrical thing instead of just another episode on the show. Right. I guess. So we're going to finish those two. And then, oh, shit, we should finish part two of Downfall of a Joy. Does that make sense? Yeah. I guess I would be interested to um, try to find out, like, when production of all this stuff started. Because Mm -hmm. um, the first episode at all, which was... Um, the new Padawan. Yeah, or not the first episode, but the first, the first Star Wars Clone Wars story told in general. Yeah, well, because it's the first section of the movie, and the movie was the yeah. the theatrical release was the first thing that we saw, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So the production code on that's like one eighteen. Yeah, and then, then it's like one oh three. Then what is it? It's one eighteen, one oh one, one oh three, one oh four is the movie. Mm-hmm. So we know for a fact that they that this first season was deep into production and then George Lucas came in during a screening and was watching some of the pre finished episodes mm-hmm. and said hey this is good take that take that take that put them together we'll make this movie we're gonna put it in theaters and everybody was like uh 
George, what the fuck? And he was like, no, uh, that's what we're going to do. So I like yeah, it. Good a, idea. It's a good idea. I think, uh, you know, it'd be really fun to introduce these characters on a big screen, even though they weren't uh, animated with the quality to hold up on a 40 foot screen. So Right. <laughs> So that's See, like, why I'm kind of interested to know, like when, when overall production started. I can tell you for sure, pre-production probably started as soon as Revenge of the Sith came out. Okay, like on a show like this, to plan new characters and an arc like that, you're writing the script. End of 2005, somewhere in 2006. And then you still have to go in pre-production. You start have to have making like the models. You start have to animating models. You know, yeah. you're storyboarding out all this for an animated thing and for a season of animated stuff. You know, it takes a while. I don't oh, even yeah. remember when, uh, when the project was officially announced. Yeah, because like even with you know looking forward to the the show Star Wars Resistance coming out in the fall. I'm sure that has been a production for the last two years. You know? Yeah, that's probably one of those things that when we found out that the last season of that season four of Rebels would be the last season, mm-hmm. Dave Filoni basically said, don't worry, that's not the end of Star Wars. Animated An- Star Wars. Animated so. Star Wars. Like, Yeah. So at that point, I'm sure he was already working he's working on the new one right yes yes he is yeah that's what i thought so he's still heading it so so it was probably like a nice handoff you know so at that point he was probably already in production of resistance oh yeah yeah because you have to keep in mind too so um it's like these things that happen where uh so when he made the announcement with star wars celebration last year yep so April 2017, mm. he made the announcement that Clone Wars, or uh, sorry, uh, Rebels would be ending. Correct. Then for that audience, in which I was in that audience, he showed us the first episode for the season, which yeah. wouldn't start for another six months. Yes. And that episode was finished. That episode was like fully finished. Like yeah. there was nothing that, off. That yeah. whole season was done at that point. Oh, surely, yeah. You know. Like they were already just they were sitting on it, they were holding on to it, you know. It was later it's... that day or the next day or whatever when we were sitting in line waiting for the last Jedi, and you were talking about uh, that Rebels panel because up to yeah. that point I had never watched any of the any of Rebels, right? Uh huh. You're like, yeah. dude, you got to fucking watch it. Like, yeah, take some <laughs> I was time. like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> right, and I think I was talking about the Clone Wars. And you're yeah. like, yeah, you know, whatever, but uh, Rebels is where it's at. So <laughs> yeah. uh, you definitely opened my eyes to Rebels, which yeah. pushed me further down this rabbit hole of wanting to <laughs> to explore all animated Star Wars yep. business. Go, go yep. on this podcast adventure, which we should probably yeah. get back to. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, we're past the yeah, we haven't even passed the news reel. Yeah, we haven't even started talking yet about the episode yet. So. <laughs> Not at all. 15 minutes in this is how we go my guys like this is how we do it you got it so we're very go prompt in uh, yes. and concise if you have hey, we're yet. talking about behind the scenes speculation stuff that's you know, right it's, man this is what we do we uh go on a, tangents and it's called a deep dive for a reason we dive it's a, deep. it's a it's a nerd's duty to speculate about shit that we cannot prove in the fucking least so right and then you you state it as absolute fact and you yeah. stick to your guns. Stick to it. Everybody else is fucking wrong. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Carry on. To uh, this episode. This episode. To kick off this episode, we've got Gan uh talking to Grievous. And um, and he's actually finally named in this episode, by the way. He is named. Grievous says it right away. Right away. Grievous is like, Gan Yeah. Which I did some Google Foo on uh, Google Translate. Mm-hmm. And I uh, just kind of typed it in, and I took the H out because, like, my um, my closed captionings had GA spelled G H A, and like yeah, the, mine. That's what I got. Too. That wouldn't like translate into anything, so I took mm-hmm. the H out and just put G A space knocked, 
um, which not does not sound familiar to you at all. Is that like night? German for night? German for night. So if you just yeah. type Ganacht, mm-hmm. it translates to good night into English. Oh, so interesting. But if you reverse translate good good night from English into German, it's not Ganacht. It's something else. So I don't know if that's an actual translation or not. But I did. Uh, yeah, I, knocked for sure. You know, knocked for sure is night, but the ga. Yeah. So I don't know if it's like Ganacht is like good night. You know, like some sort of abbreviation. Maybe some of, sort of yeah of the proper like, form of the word, the literal yeah. translation of good night. Some colloquialization of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or if it's just one of those intricacies that uh, Google doesn't understand in reverse translation. Could be, yeah. But uh, we can call him good night from here on out if you want. <laughs> so anyway, good night's talking weird. to Grievous, and he's like, yo, I got this droid, and uh, just to let you know, I want cash. So at this point, I'm like, all right, got to do some some other research that's not Google, but is Wikipedia, and we're looking up cash. And mm-hmm. to what I can see, there is no quote-unquote, cash in the Star Wars universe. There is, like, you got to look up, you can look up cash, but then it just goes straight to currency. And the two recognized currencies in Star Wars canon are uh, re- galactic credits, or republic mm-hmm. credits, that turn into imperial credits. And uh, the other ones are whoopie whoopies, whoopie whoopies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which you may recognize from uh, The Phantom Menace. Yeah, that's where I'm assuming that would have been brought up. It's where uh. it originated from. It says the latter existing almost solely in the Outer Rim territories. Uh, oh there are some tertiary currencies that one is called like a. Drugit, Drugat, D R U G G A T, and then there's like you know it's like so many Drugats equal a something else, yeah. so many Drugats equal a Pegat, so many Pegats equal uh, True Gut. So that's kind of like the the wizard currency in the Star Wars universe where you <laughs> get sickles and like galleons, or galleon whatever. sickles like, and yep. <laughs> nuts, gnuts, yeah. nuts. I don't know, whatever it is. Uh-huh. So there are, this proves to me that there are space wizards out there. So uh, Uncle Owen was not wrong, maybe, yeah. in calling Obi-Wan a space wizard. Yeah, makes sense. And that means that Obi-Wan is probably related to Harry Potter um, somewhere along the line. If only uh, WB and Disney could get that together. That's right. I'm still waiting for a uh, Star Wars Infinity War crossover of some sort. So I would pay some good whoopie oopies for that. Hey, man. like Just hop over to the next galaxy. That's all you got to do. Find the Guardians of the other galaxy. So The other Guardians of the other galaxy. Exactly, yeah. I would call them the Space Guardians, but our Guardians of the Galaxy are from space. So Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things. So our uh, plot A, plot B in the beginning of this thing are um, like Anakin and his crew, which is like Anakin, Ahsoka, Rex, and some other clones, mm-hmm. and like Ganacht and uh, an R two, which yeah, R two, which quickly yeah. turns into like R two and Grievous. Grievous, yeah, right. So Anakin's like making a phone call. No, Anakin's not making a phone call. No, Re- Anakin Rex and Anakin is on are- the. Rex yeah. and Anakin are talking to each other mm-hmm. about – they've been, like, scanning the system looking for this um, listening like outpost, a, right? Yeah. yeah. In the background, Ahsoka straight takes out her communicator and holds it up and dials it like a phone and then holds it up <laughs> to her ear, which you don't see anything else of that until, it, like, we cut away and then cut back to them because um, even though Mr. Goodnight has talked to General Grievous – like, we have to cut back to him, and then, like, he flies into, like, a system wherever they're wherever they're going, right? Yeah. Towards the I secret base. make a note of, yeah. It is a moon of Rusan. Rusan? 
do they mention that? I don't think they ever do no, mention that, right? No, that's, that's it's a, just a, that's that's a, a Wikipedia poll. That's Wikipedia poll right there. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Never mentioned, never named. So, um, Miss, Mr. Goodnight shows up to Grievous' uh, secret treehouse, and he's like, yo, man, I'm here. Like, even though I just had a conversation with you telling you how I want cash, like, I, I have to call you back and tell you that I'm here. Like, we couldn't yeah. just... We couldn't just put those two together. Into... Yeah, we couldn't either talk all at once then, or we couldn't have just waited and talked all at once now. No, nope. you know? <laughs> I had I had to yeah. split it up. There seems to be a an unnecessary amount of like plot A, plot B, jump, plot A, plot B, cut here, cut there, cut here, cut there, back and forth, like yeah, all the time. Like and they... that. That does happen often in the Clone Wars. I mean, you're taking a 22-minute show and essentially breaking that up into thirds. So you got six and a half, seven-minute segments that are in between commercials, and you've got to break that up into smaller bits to, for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't. I don't make TV shows. I just bitch about them on the internet. <laughs> right. It, it is a weird thing to though to, because I I never realized it watching the show my first time through but now that we've like analyzed you know we're on a 15th story episode you know however you want to break them up our 15th episode here of breaking these up there is a weird need to do plot a plot b which i don't understand why and i'm cool with the plot a plot b but we do it's like it's like we're in fucking binary. It's like A B A B A A A B B A B A A B. You know, mm-hmm. like yeah, it just jumps. Uh, this episode and the last episode specifically, we'll see if yeah. this one's as bad as Downfall of a Droid because I definitely ragged on that a lot for that. Oh, but yeah, we're shortly into this episode and that's that is what's happening. Um, because yeah, my like, notes are like it, com- yeah, my notes are like cut to. Cut to Twilight, cut to Vulture's Claw, cut to Ganacht, cut to Grievous, cut to Ahsoka Anakin, cut to Ganacht at the base, like, mm-hmm. and it's just back and forth. So, uh, to push forward, um, Ahsoka's making her phone call, um, Ganacht is talking to Grievous, I'm always doing this, R2 is like in a closet, like humming to himself like cutting a hole and then he like yeah. does some hot wiring um we're, did you pick up on what he was doing so he like literally drills out a hole and then like a satellite starts turning and then he somehow transmits the signal through whatever magic wire he happened to yeah so he's basically he's, hold of. he's commandeering the satellite and like hot wiring a an sos connection yeah um so he's sending out like uh a, a sense some of, sort of SOS signal, yeah. Right, he's saying, hey, this is where I am. Like, mm-hmm. help me Just out. Just a, a ping, yeah. Right. But it... Like, <sighs> SYD, save your droid. SYD, save your droid. This is where I'm at. Yeah. And, um... But it's, it's just weird, because, like... How... How did he know that exact wire that would control all of those systems... <laughs> Because he's R2. Would be right he's, behind that. He's R2, and he's never had his fucking memory erased, and he's... So he knows everything about every ship? Yeah, he's a space mechanic droid. Uh, that's right. what That's what astromech droids are, are good for, right? Mm, yeah, uh, I guess. So this is picked up by Ahsoka on her telephone. Mm-hmm. And while she's like, hey, Master, I hear something, and like plays it over the loudspeaker of the ship and Anakin's like turn it up and then Goldie like turns some shit and he's like no you're fucking you're losing it so then he just like smacks the control panel and it gets really loud and it sounds like yeah. R2 and he was like that's R2 like I yep. recognize his his R2's chirping his whirly whoop and yep. um so he's like hey set a course for fucking here like we're going mm-hmm. um well first he calls Obi-Wan right right so he calls Obi Wan, explains that they got the droid SOS, and Obi Wan is like, "Uh, you have other stuff to be doing right now, you know. Like, if anything, go blow up the ship. Maybe if he does still have all the information on there." Um, 
But Anakin is like, well, what if we went and rescued him instead? And Obi-Wan is... Obi-Wan says no. It's not a rescue mission. Yeah. Like, go and blow the fucking place up. End of yeah, story. Yeah, just blow the shit up. And then yeah. hangs up. Yeah. And it's it's weird because Obi-Wan is... He seems colder than usual mm-hmm. in, the, in these, these last two episodes. Last episode and this episode, he seems very detached, right? He's like, it's just a droid, Anakin. Kill it. There will be other ones. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely pushing hard the no attachment, and um, is this supposed to help sell you on? I don't remember owning any droids from a new hope. Which or, is like, eh. complete bullshit because there are these two episodes where Anakin keeps bringing up R two. So like, yeah, like nonstop. And he's like, but yeah. he's my friend. He's not just a yeah. droid. Come on, master. Like. Yeah. And then even in the live action films, he's always calling on R two to do shit. So I don't, I don't understand this at all. Yeah, I don't either. Um, like when we first meet them in Phantom Menace, the droid that saves the ship they're on before they have to land on Tatooine because the hyperspace or uh, the hyperdrive goes down is fucking R two. The dude looks at it and is like, "Hey, this droid is R two D two. Oh, <laughs> an extremely well put together little droid, Your Highness." Yeah. And then, like, fucking Padme is like, thank you, droid, for saving us. Thank you. I'm going to make my slave child clean this when it's actually yes. it's actually the queen. Yes. She pissed me oh, off. Oh, yeah, that's that's Kier Knightley saying that line then, isn't it? Yeah. This is called revenge, bitch. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> hilarious. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> to think that Kier Knightley was part of all of this, too. It's not something I believed until way after the fact. Oh, really? Until, like, yeah. after Kira Knightley was in fucking Pirates of the Caribbean, and somebody was mm-hmm. like, yeah, she's in fucking... She was the queen. And I was like, no, she's not dipshit. Yeah, like, everybody knows it's Natalie fucking Portman. You're like, uh, handmaidens, yo. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I've had that conversation, too, where I've had to point out, I'm like, Kira Knightley, and this scene is Natalie, this scene is Natalie, Kira, Kira, Natalie, See, Natalie. That would have <laughs> been... You would have been schooling me on that conversation back in the day <laughs> i again and I'm i said very, i will i will never very pedantic i will never not know even the most minute fucking detail of star wars again <laughs> and it'll come in handy someday hey okay. we're getting into it so so anyway uh, so we're moving on anakin, what we yep. got? well anakin and Anakin says fuck that yep they're basically like yeah. fuck it He's like, yeah, Obi-Wan hung up on me. Like, I don't fucking listen to him anyway. Uh, so they follow the trail. They find the base. Um, at that point, the, the, yeah. So they found, they have already found the base because that's when they call Obi-Wan. He was like, just hang back. Uh-huh. I'm going to send some reinforcements. Yeah. Um, our plot B is like, Mr. Goodnight and R2 wandering around in the base and. My notes on that are docking, walking, aliens, more aliens, zapping, more zapping, new aliens. Because um, R2 is doing, like, what he's supposed to do. Like, an mm-hmm. act is like, hey, go over there. And and it's just, like, walking behind R2. But periodically, he'll just, like, fucking zap him with this little hand taser that he's yeah. got. And he's like, ha, huh, asshole. And then, so they're walking around. You see some aliens, which I didn't recognize and uh, didn't have time to look into. Because what I was looking into is the shit that's on their screen. Mm-hmm. And this one alien's like, does that like covering up the screen like you got caught watching porn or something? Like, go away, yeah. go away. You don't get to look at this. And so when I did get a clear picture of it, I'm like, all right, what does this say? And you can see like three planets. Mm-hmm. Um, when it's when it's the stuff that's the what the aliens are looking at, you can't see anything. Mm-hmm. Right. But then we go back to plot A, and it's clone troopers, and they're like, hey, here's the fucking planet. Here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like three planets or three moons or whatever, and it's got a bunch of Arbesh on it. Yeah. 90% of the Arbesh in this episode is fucking jibber-jabber. Like, it translates to E-R-O-P-F-L-K-W-M. E D W O V O V E D O D D. Like it's all, it's just nonsense. Just a s- random assortment of letters that somebody just plopped in. Right. And then occasionally, um, so what do we got? 
R2 is doing some beeping. Oh, R2, R2 and Grievous meet. They're talking to each other. And uh, Grievous is like, what are, what are you hiding, little droid? I, this is my awesome Grievous accent. Do you like that? Yeah, very good. It sounds <laughs> He sounds very similar just, to me. Just like that. Head. Just like I was, you know, through these headphones, I just, I thought I was hearing Grievous himself. Like, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> my impression yeah. of Grievous is off today. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, you're good. We'll, we'll go from there. Uh, but Grievous is like... Uh, he says, oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. We're all droids here. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. And they close up on his eyes. Mm-hmm. which, And they're standing next to the fucking Trandoshan that Mr. Goodnight and uh, yeah. like the other two fucking aliens that are watching porn on the computer. Yeah. Um, Grievous so immediately I, says, really rip this little rat apart and find out everything he knows. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then they like kick him in the butt and he like slides down the hall into this fucking this fucking torture room I guess I don't know I describe it yeah. as like a Frankenstein table um we yeah, cut like a slab experimentation yep. with a whole thing. bunch of like yeah. arms sticking up around it so yeah. we cut back to the twilight um when the trooper like enlarges what so there's like three planets on the screen and then he like enlarges mm-hmm to the one planet that they're on it pops there's three squares with block text that pop up in three of the corners and then um like the previous screen had some coordinates on it that were five uh-huh. five two four five point three four five five it's almost like a uh led to longitude thing because the other mm-hmm. one is like two three five five three two oh four or something those are consistent those are the same and th- okay. it's the same jibber jabber above it uh er m w e r m d d which is cool and then mm-hmm. i was like all right well maybe maybe like we have some coded text or something and the blocks of text are like seven by eight and it literally is all just all three squares are just jibber jabber and then okay. right in the middle, in Arabesh, it says "Zoom in, Sky Top Station." So it's like somebody knew what was going on. Yeah, and I just don't, I don't get why. There's no like, consistency to it, right? Some of it, some of it makes sense. Like we, we yeah. have a message that says "Zoom in, Sky Top Station," so we mm-hmm. know that this place is called Sky Top Station. This is the zoom in of said station, and then we have just like three blocks of text. So. I don't know. Is that secret codes that they got to use to like get the garage door opener to work? Maybe I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, and then from a real world perspective too, I'm I'm curious on what it takes to animate those in terms of when you're placing it in. Can like you the Arbash real... letters. Yeah, Dude, like you can fucking. I've had Arbash as a font on my computer for years. Like, but that's can, what I'm saying. Yeah, like download, somebody could have just you can typed download it. a free font and then in English you type "Hello, Lorenzo," and on the screen pops up pops up the Arabesh characters. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so if somebody's just photoshopping that shit in. They could have if they're already just slamming buttons on a keyboard. They could have just also they typed have just in something type, coherent. Right. Yeah. So I that yeah that that part that part is just weird to me to to just not take any effort again we've kind of talked about the compressed time scale maybe it takes to make these episodes you know yeah but if you're, the, if all you're doing is typing typing some text on a keyboard like doesn't take that much longer to yeah just i don't know type in and the if lyrics you're not of gonna, fucking hakuna matata or something like right who cares like <laughs> there was the there was that episode rookies two weeks ago yeah uh-huh. Three weeks ago, whichever one it was, and they had the the detonator for their explosive device that they rigged up, mm-hmm. and like the first line said, A T T E rules, and rules yeah. was spelled like R U L three Z, yeah, and then the next line said some text, like yep, like that's somebody funny somebody still. thought it yeah. like all right just yeah. put some text in here. some text in there bam there you go literally some text and it stayed. Yeah. You know, but so. this, we just have fucking jibber jabber. 
Somebody's just typing shit in. Just so, fucking a monkey pecking at a fucking keyboard. <laughs> hey. <sighs> All right. So what? I'll, I'll what's calm happening down. next? Other? We'll, we'll yeah, move fine. forward. Uh, so they get there. They decide they're going to go uh, to the station itself. So mm-hmm. they've got this very dramatic exit from the back of the twilight. Yeah. I wrote Captain America 2 exit. Iron Man 2 exit. I think they did it in both of them. That sounds right. Where they're jumping off the back of a they plane. They just jump yeah. off the back of the plane. I know for yep. I know for a fact they do it in, in The Winter Soldier. And I know that Tony does it at the beginning of... It's his entrance in into Iron, Iron Man, Man movie. But I couldn't remember if it was Iron Man 2 or Iron Man 3. It's the second one. Because he jumps out of the plane and then that's when he lands uh, in fist... To yep. the ground, Iron Man pose yep. at the the Stark convention. Yep, yep. And then like the ladies are dancing around him, and yep, sparks are flying, and there's yep. pyrotechnics. And then he introduces, I forgot what he even introduced, but anyways, I don't remember. Yeah. I literally just saw this movie like two weeks ago, and yeah, it's already pushed out of my mind. So yeah, I'm anyways, not, I'm not really sure. Um, <laughs> we'll get to those eventually. Ahsoka makes Rex carry Goldie, which is kind of interesting because she like insists yeah. of taking Goldie with him. Goldie is R three S six, which is the replacement astromech unit that they got to replace R two D two when R two D two went missing. Yeah, I guess we didn't bring that up. R two's been R two's been missing, and we've been looking for him. And then we got this transmission, and and now we're in full fledged like rescue mode, even though we're not supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. What is they never bring up the strategy behind bringing R three with them? Right? She says it's just um, like Ahsoka says something to the effect of, uh, "We'll need them to like unlock doors and and do computer stuff." Is essentially what she says. And she's because Rex is like, "Oh, we're taking the droid," and she's like, "Yeah, he could be helpful to like unlock doors, and you're gonna carry him." And he's like, "Fuck." So, are we to believe that in this universe of astromechs and lightsabers and laser blasters that the only way to break in through a door is with an astromech and there's not like a nice little handheld thing that you can just stick into those ports that will do it for you? So it would be like a Toy Darian army knife. Yeah, something. Since yeah. we equated like Toydaria and their neutrality to like Switzerland and their neutrality, so instead of yes. a Swiss Army knife, it's yeah. a Toydarian Army knife. Toydarian Army knife, yeah. Yeah. Um, I right. guess that is just any handy astromech droid or droid that you have. So this is why the Toydarian Army knife fell out of style. <laughs> okay. So. Just going with the. Like the, did the Astromex unionize or like? no? I think um, I think somebody took like their Toydarian army knife, uh, their TAC, right? T A K mm-hmm. Toydarian army knife. Yeah. And uh, somebody like Anakin, and they like started fucking with it and doing some improvements, and like maybe put some spring loaded stuff, and then uh, mm-hmm. some something that ran on, you know, mechanized it in one way or another, and. And other people are like, oh, that's cool. So then they were doing that. And then the same dude was like, oh, like, I'll, I'll put fucking wheels on it so I can, like, drive around. And, like, <laughs> and they just got bigger and bigger. And, and eventually this evolved into the Astromech droid series. Um, so it's only and like. We got so far that we're like, you forgot about the, the simple thing from that, from which it came. Right. So now everybody's got their MP3 um, Toy toy Darian army knives and there's only like those couple of guys that are still like started to, they went back to like toy dairy and army knives on vinyl so <laughs> theirs are smaller okay all right it just it's a weird thing yeah it is weird. just like even visually seeing rex trying to hang on to this thing as he's jumping out of a plane like yeah it's it's silly yeah it's it's ridiculous anyway because uh, so as Ahsoka is like free falling, she's like holding her breath and she's got like her cheeks puffed out. Yeah. Uh, is this like out of fear? Does she not want to breathe the air? Like, I, I 
think they just animated a thing and then went with it, you know, like because I don't know if you've ever been skydiving. No, but I have, mm-hmm. and you have to breathe. Breathing is essential to successfully landing on the ground. Well, you're also falling for a very long period of time, and there's no reason to not breathe, right? right. Like, I just but the air is getting thicker and thicker as you go down, anyways. Like, right? You know, I found it's, it it's weird. I found it odd that um, she held her breath. Um, as, as they're falling, we've got a mm-hmm. couple of, of fucking droid jokes. Yeah. And there's a bunch of, it cuts to like inside the station cause you yeah. get, you, you got to cut away like every fucking 15 seconds. Um, yeah. and there's a bunch of battle <laughs> droids standing around like one hands a box and another box is like, here, take this downstairs. Be sure not to drop it. Yep. And the fucking droid turns around, drops it. When he drops it, it doesn't just like hit the floor. Like he trips, he throws trips. it in the air and yep. then it comes down and smashes him on the head. Yep. Like he, I, he drops a box on his own head. Then one of the yep. other droids is like, ah, oh, these six, three, one, these six, three, one versions. They just aren't the brightest, brightest <laughs> bulb on the ship. And as he's saying this, like all of our crew from outside or hero crew are like falling past the window. So yeah. like this droids talking shit instead of, Fucking looking out the window. Paying attention to right. what their one thing is. Yeah. It's a weird moment to break up the Skyfall it's, thing. That Skyfall is very scary. Skyfall. The Bond movie? I haven't yes. seen that one. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a very good one. So so at that point, um, our heroes land. Anakin like, cuts a hole to get inside, right? I, I made a note that there was a lot of fucking cutting holes through walls and floors and shit to get where you know, we yeah, need to I, go. I did not make a note on uh, how they get back in, but... It's the, so they land, Anakin cuts yeah, a hole, in. they jump down to the level below him, they split up, Anakin's like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go find R2, you guys go um, set up all these explosives. Yeah, because they will like blow the armory it up the or something. Yeah. yeah, and then we'll head back to the the docking bay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Ahsoka and go back to God knocked. Yeah. Well, or... right before that, Ahsoka makes this joke about, "Oh, I hope you find R two in one piece." And my note yeah. was, "He's not," because then we cut back to Ganacht, and they are. He's pulling R two apart. Yep. Uh, and I do like the design of the way that they have R two like disassembled. To me, it looks pretty logical. Like his side legs have been removed. Mm-hmm. And then his outer chest cabinet has been like pulled off, and then there's yeah. other stuff inside that. Um, his what would be neck and head section come off in like a couple of different pieces. Um, but it all the the way that it is in this exploded disassembled view, yeah, looks feasible. I it, agree. The, I definitely agree with that. The way that this technology works, where it's like a plug and play type thing. Um, because you would have to imagine that these droids would need to be user friendly for well, whomever yeah, from owns like a, them, and even from like a production standpoint. So like these pieces are all probably being mass produced somewhere, then they get assembled somewhere, right? You know. Do you think that we'll ever see like a droid assembly line so we know exactly how this stuff works? I, I wonder if we watched everything in chronological order if we already have Mm. (laughs) this is a very good question yeah which brings up the question i do actually have is because ganoct and team are disassembling everything as if they had never seen an astromech droid before because they're trying to get to his memory banks Right, right. which you would think would be, in, like, he's got a bunch of fucking computer ports and shit, like, you find the fucking thing and you plug him in, right? And yeah. then you extract the information out of him. You don't have to, to physically take the thing apart. If I steal somebody's computer, maybe these guys hadn't seen um, Zoolander yet. Like, you know how Derek Zoolander, <laughs> yeah. they're like, the files it's are in, in the, the computer. Com- in the computer? <laughs> um, so yeah. they think the 
the the information is inside R two. So they literally have they to crack are literally them open. cracking them open and looking or like, for the information. Yeah, because like, or at the very least, too, like if you don't want to bring the whole computer, say like in other spy movies, as have been has been done, which I can't think of a specific one off the top of my head, but like you know, you you break the computer open and you go straight for the hard drive. Yeah. And you just put the hard drive in your fucking bag and not the entire PC tower, right? Right. But, like, you know what you're going after. Hey, we need the information. It's going to be in the hard drive. So yeah. these guys are pulling, like, they took apart the legs? Like They took the legs off. Maybe you have to take the legs off and pull the cabinet apart and rip his head off and unplug it to get to the memory bank. Maybe they Maybe. make it like super hard to get to to Maybe, thwart but, people from doing shit like this. Or it's 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 like I need to change the oil in my car. Let me take off all four tires. Yeah, like I changed the oil in a truck today, and I did not take the tires off. And maybe it would have been easier if I did that. Right? Did you take the tires off and remove all four doors? Or uh, two doors on the truck. It's only got two, so no, yeah. I didn't. I didn't do either of those things. Yeah. Did you take apart the windshield wiper? Let's see. Yeah. No, I didn't do that either. You didn't dismantle the windshield wiper off the blade. Yeah. You know? No, I didn't do that. Yeah. So, you, you you didn't remove all both both engine and cabin air filters in order to get to the. Uh, no, I didn't. The oil. Didn't didn't do that. <laughs> see, this is this is what confuses me about. In the one scene that there is some logic to it in terms of, yes, when we see the the dismantled R2, the pieces all make sense, right? It's not like Michael Bay's Transformers where things are kind of just melding out of nowhere as we transform from truck into Optimus Prime. Well, they are called Transformers. I, 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 I guess. I mean, so if something is called a Transformer, you can't really argue against the fact that it transforms. Just saying. I'm just saying that mass can neither be created nor destroyed. And but it can be transformed. Yes. But the pieces still need to come from some logical spot. So uh so again back to R2. That part is logical in terms of how he has been dismantled. As to why he's being dismantled in such a a fashion. I I got nothing for you there. Yeah. It, it threw me off. So my next note is that um, Ganak shocks some info out of R2. Like, mm-hmm. so R2's like half disassembled and he just like jabs him with his fucking little shocking device, right? And yes. this like fires up some. Like a display. A projection unit. of like some hidden files or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So is R2 still conscious for all of this, by the way? I don't think so because well, actually maybe. And I don't He's know still when it, I don't know powered when powered on. Right. I don't remember when it happens. Um, if it's now or later, because we see him in pieces now and we see him in pieces later, right? Yes. Yeah. At one of these two times, his head is just sitting there. And mm-hmm. you see like even his uh little thing little square thing on the front of his face with yeah like his eyeball i guess yeah um his like his view, like it's a, thingy. yeah his viewer is like askew yeah um because kevin popped off a little bit kevin smith was there view askew yeah <laughs> get it yep yeah so the ask uh, universe <laughs> but right before right before it cuts um he like whines it's like Meh. yeah so, I think I think there is some sort of a, awareness that he has been disassembled, and um, that could be like the last last vestige effort of his batteries of for him to um, complain about his particular situation. But um, so, one one other quick question yeah. that's gonna maybe lead us on a little bit of a tangent. I don't think we've discussed this yet. So we we kind of know that droids have a will to live. Based on based on C3PO always 
uh, kind of acting in his own self-interest. Yes, he like he's always afraid of battle. He's even talking about like his like uh, he, fear that his joints will get rusted on Tatooine when they land. Yep. You know, there there is some sort of functional will there, right? Right. Um, which oddly enough kind of puts them ahead of Padme. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, so we we know that much. Where. When they get shocked, do they all have some sort of pain receptors? In so they, there definitely um, seems to be some type of pain receptor included in some droid programming, and I wonder yeah. if it's programming or if that like does it have to be hardwired or is that like a like a software update that you can do? Yeah, um, because if it's just a software update, like you have to have some type of sensor to there has to be sensors, yeah, to pick it up pick up yeah each shock that's happening yeah i would imagine that droids that are more humanoid would be more apt to have some type of uh sensors and or sensory programming Mm -hmm. right because isn't that one isn't that a problem with like robotics right right now is like if you had a robotic hand uh-huh. That is wired into your brain. Like you have to train your brain how to use it. Because mm-hmm. if you go to pick up a glass and it's like close actuators and it just like smash, smash through, smash yeah. the glass or smash your fucking PBR can or whatever. Mm-hmm. So because there is no feeling, like the ability to apply the proper amount of pressure, yeah, is learned? Question mark. I'm not really well, sure. From from yeah, from the robot standpoint, it's either you know, it's it's closed or open, right? It's it's binary in that sense, right? Like Right. Um we're going to actuate this way or not, you know. It's so cuz also cuz speaking like muscles muscles only pull, right? Right. That's why you have a bicep and a tricep. Like your Exactly. Your bicep closed closes your elbow your tricep mm-hmm. opens your elbow yeah so muscles can only pull they can never push correct um but like for a, for a robot the, you know it, it's like the joint is getting if it's like a hydraulic joint right it's like it's just filling the hydraulic or it's not right like the, the hydraulic is being actuated in some form right so that's that's part of it i guess is where like if it's squeezing on something it's there's there's no pressure sensitivity to care really right yeah like, there's got there's got to be some sort of programming i don't know i'm going to have to do some some thinking about this so we've got a tractor at work and it's got like a hydraulic lift on it right yeah so it's like um arms go up arms go down mhm so it's when the arms go up, it's like fill the pistons with fucking hydraulic oil. Yeah. And then when you remove, when you drop the arms down, you fucking reverse that process and it sucks the fucking shit out of it. Yeah. And I so think from, from that a mechanic standpoint, it's just, yeah, it's just doing what it's doing. It's, doing, no... one, it's doing one action and one action only. But yeah, like if, if there is something in my way, like if there is a truck in my way and I bring the bring the tractor bucket down mm-hmm. and it hits the truck, like it's going to just keep pushing and it's going to pick up the front end of the tractor. It yeah. doesn't know to stop. Exactly. Yeah. So um but I feel so like, like there are cuz from like a C3PO point of view, you know, like but like a garage door, if I'm dumb and I lay down underneath my garage door and hit the button, when it comes down and it hits me in the face, it's uh-huh. going to feel resistance and reverse. So that's and this programming is, into it, right? Right, because it has a computer board in the garage door opener mm-hmm. itself. So yeah. like you hit the button and it says, okay, spin this fucking gear this one direction and it's going to lower yeah. your garage door. But then when it when it feels resistance and it's not where it's supposed to be on the ground, mm-hmm. it'll pause and the pressure will hold and then it'll 
go Back fuck up. something's in the way and it'll reverse yeah. it'll reverse the the direction of the gear and it'll pull your garage door back mm-hmm. up or like elevator doors too right like yeah i don't know i've never stuck my face in the in elevator doors just garage doors please test that for us i will <laughs> next time you and i are together <laughs> yes <laughs> you buy the beer so, i will test the gr- the uh elevator the door elevator with door my face just... <laughs> Uh, I'm sure I've never seen that in a horror movie where somebody... No, I'm not going to uh, test it with my neck, just with my face. <laughs> so, um, so if you just lose the end of your nose, we're all, we're all good. Um, yeah, we'll see. So anyways, that's that's the one kind of thing. Like we, We've seen it plenty of times throughout mm-hmm. the movies and such, you know. But because because then like my other question too that I've always kind of had is is like when C three PO's head gets removed from his body, yeah, and installed on the the battle droid. Mm -hmm. So he's he's feeling all the feelings of that droid's body, right? So like if he got shot, Mm -hmm. like he he full blown felt that, right? Okay. So then, also, why is C three PO's head when it gets shot off still like a functioning conscious head that's on, but like when battle droids get sliced up, they're like like full fully disabled. Uh, I don't know. Or even to the point where like R two is dismantled and still like, please stop. Yo, know, like maybe there's like multiple points of. Uh, it's like having multiple motherboards, right? So if yeah. you can cleanly sever the connection in between the motherboards, then you have two different motherboards that are thinking slash feeling, quote unquote, yeah. feeling different things, right? Uh-huh. But if you cut like a cross and you cut through. And that's where, yeah. Through the motherboard, that's where the destruction comes from. Okay. Because like. C-3PO's head is just knocked off of his body. Yeah. Right? We're talking about... Well, what about like when Grievous knocks off the heads of these battle droids? They only have one motherboard. It's in their chest. It's in the chest right down there? Yep. Okay. That makes sense. I'll, I'll buy that because they do have the smaller heads. So yep. That I will buy. Okay. Yep. I think... Yeah, we got to move on because I don't think we'll figure anything else out from that. <laughs> yeah. So, at this point, you know, we've got R2 that's uh, slowly being taken apart. Um... Mr. Goodnight finds these fucking hidden files, which are full of nonsense letters. Grievous comes in and is like, oh, shit, like fucking pay dirt, mother load right here. Mm-hmm. And and Ganacht thinks that he can use this to his advantage and is like, oh, yeah, so uh, this thing's worth more now, so I want more money. And Grievous says no and stabs him in the back. Yep. literally just through the back goes with a lightsaber the kill. kills yep. him yep. calls calls in some magna droids and is like hey watch over this fucking r2 like i'm gonna go uh go find these intruders because i guess an alarm went off or something yeah so, well they don't even he doesn't even know that at that point it's not until well because here's that happens in my notes is grievous kills got knocked but then my note right afterwards is r3 slash goldie informs grievous that jedi are on the station oh okay that's what it is yeah so this is where we learn for sure yeah that goldie is a fucking spy working for grievous yeah uh side because i think grievous left to go inform dooku maybe that like hey we have all this awesome shit yeah and then Goldie is like, oh, by the way, I'm on the ship, and there are Jedi here, too. Right. Like, keep that in mind, please. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a base, not a ship. Yes, the base. The big base <laughs> thingy. Yeah. Even though it probably <laughs> doubles as a ship. It is it's, yeah. There. but It's um, probably the same sets as the ship we've seen before, so. Yes. Actually, <laughs> um, so I was watching the behind-the-scenes stuff, and uh-huh. one of the things they said was that uh, a new quote-unquote set – for they did like two new sets for this Ew. for this uh episode and it's a hallway so okay. they just orient the hallway in all different shapes and forms yeah 
uh, you know, shoot it it's from the same 30, hallway, shoot but it we from just 33 it. degrees elevation, you know, yeah. fucking two meters or shoot it from 90 degrees elevation, one meter, you know? Yeah. So that's most of what you see inside this base is hallway yep. and it's all the same hallway. It's just dressed differently. Yeah. And the other thing is the docking bay that we will see at the end of this episode. And right. that doubles for other docking bays and other ships slash bases. Um, for the rest of the series. All right. So, yeah. uh, second side note, do you know why Goldie is called Goldie? This is an easy question. Just because he's gold. Yeah. Right. He's gold yeah. and black, right? Yeah. Do you know why he's gold and black? No. Because Dave Filoni and his brother are Pittsburgh Steeler fans. Interesting. That I was unaware of at all. <laughs> like, So, I guess Filoni is from Pittsburgh. Because okay. he's a Steelers fan. I believe he's a Pirates fan, Penguins fan. No, I would imagine. Full thing. Everything, uh, yeah. So those three teams, their colors are black and gold. Um, All right. So that is why Goldie is black and gold. All right. Everything that, everything yeah. you knew you always wanted to know about Goldie. I like that he makes him a spy. You know, like He does make him a spy. Yeah. If he's representing my hometown, yeah, let's make him the most annoying droid. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so cruising through this stuff, um, at this point we're cutting back and forth be, since since Grievous knows that there are Jedi on the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, Ahsoka and her crew find what they're looking for, right? And I don't remember. Yeah, which is... What, like the armory room to try and get yeah, I thought it was the explosive a, in or something? I thought they call it the armory at the beginning, and then they go on to call it something else. Yeah, I didn't make a note on actually what they were headed towards, but they get to a door that has like a red shield yes. thing in front of it, yeah. So then they dispatch Goldie to do his magic and try and disable that so that they can break into the room and then do their thing, right? Y- yeah. Yep, they call it the reactor room. Ah, okay. So I guess reactor this is, room. I thought it. I thought it was the armory as well. I don't know. I well, uh, I just thought the armory. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. But we never. Uh, Grievous see makes the inside of the room. Yeah. No, we do not. Yeah. Grievous makes yeah. the statement that he wants to download all all of R 2s information like directly into his brain or something. I don't really know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then Ahsoka and her crew get stuck at the door to the reactor room because it's ray shielded. So she's talking to Anakin. And Anakin's yeah. like, hey, I found out where R2 is, so I'm going to go get him. Like, you guys keep doing your fucking deal. And uh, I guess this will hold you up for a little bit, so figure it out. See you later. Yeah. And um, Ahsoka, who still doesn't know that Goldie's a traitor, is like, Goldie, open the door. Mm-hmm. And so he, like, plugs in. And then he's got a little, um, this is like a scene quote from Return of the Jedi when R2's like, Trying to open the fucking, or I guess it's when Han's trying to open the fucking blast door on the yeah, shield base because he's like and then hot wiring some stuff. Yeah. Hot wires it wrong and then close closes the fucking blast doors. Yeah, or the other shield doors or whatever. I don't know what I just said, but there's like shield doors. Yeah, and I would blast call doors, them so blast doors. Yeah, because shield would be like the the magic stuff, and then like the, a blast door is like another metal yeah. physical door. There's like a closes. door. And then in this case, then there's a ray shield, and then there's like a blast door that's like yeah. a secondary beefier door on the outside. Yeah. Um, just pretend that I said that in the beginning, and it'll <laughs> but sound like. Well, but before that even happens, so Goldie slash R three is plugged into the the port, mm-hmm. and he keeps like spinning it, and He's, spinning it, and spinning and like it, looking over and his shoulder, like, yeah. <laughs> And droids are making their way down the hall. And you definitely and Rex, hear the footsteps like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And Rex is like, hey, droids are on their way. Will you open this fucking door? Yep. And Gold R3 is just like, yeah, I'm I'm doing it, guys. You can't, you can't, ru- you can't rush Art here. Well, you know, it's like- Ahsoka's sticking up for, for Goldie. She's yes. like, oh, yeah. he'll, he'll get it. Like, oh, just have patience. Come on, Goldie, you're gonna, ha- yeah. like, you can get it. Yeah, because she kind of yells at Rex, too. She's like, you just have to have patience in the guy. Like, fuck off. Yeah. We're about to fucking die. And like, right, yeah, Rex is like, dude, the fucking droids are here. Like, unplug him. Let me hotwire this fucking thing. Like, I can do it. Like, get him the fuck yeah. out of the way. So then 
even Ahsoka for like I'll I'll give it to her slash the animators like she's very optimistic that he's gonna open the door as the droids are coming and then the droids you know get in fucking position to shoot at them and then and she's there's like a yeah there, there's a slight disappointment and panic as she like jumps ahead and like deflects all the laser blasts headed that th- their way while the other clones are shooting back you know yep so, so that we got she's, that she's fighting and they're like blast in the middle doors, of a yeah. hallway so they're it's like yeah. blaster fire from all fucking directions we got battle yep. droids on one end super battle droids on the other end at one yep. point she's like yo rex droid poppers and he's like excellent and fucking <laughs> slides in and throws these things that look like um uh why am i blanking the little globe shaped things Thermal detonators. Like thermal, yeah, thermal detonators, yeah. That's what they look like. So he throws one, like, at the super battle droids, Mm -hmm. uh, which there's only, like, four left because Ahsoka has taken a couple of these out. She's doing a pretty damn good job for, like, a 14-year-old Padawan, like, caught in the crossfire of a bunch of fucking droids. Um, She's doing pretty good. So it looks like a thermal detonator, and the super battle droids are, like, shit and they just like start firing at it just like trying to blast at the ground and it's like (laughs) popping around like uh some toy that i remember from the fucking 90s that i can't the old jumblers with like the little spikes on it yep yep the it would wiggle around (laughs) yeah it's like bouncing around and then it it doesn't so it doesn't blow up it's not a a fucking bomb but it's like a Mm. mini electrical bomb yeah so it does the same thing that um the ion it's a little emp like on a mini scale It's like yeah, it's an, a little EMP it's like thingy, an right? Ion tennis ball. Yes. Yep. So it shocks them. They fucking collapse, and then he throws one at the battle droids, which presumably the battle droids would have seen this happen mm-hmm. in front of their face. And uh, what do the battle droids do? Like one of them picks it up and like looks at it, and then like shakes it next to his ear, like he's testing an old incandescent light bulb, which I don't yeah. know if people know what those are anymore. Um, <laughs> and of yeah, course, that filament. Zap and, and they get fucking down. wiped out. Yep. So at this point, uh, Grievous, Grievous calls the Magna Droids and says, "Hey, take R two to my ship." So mm-hmm. these Magna Droids, in very quick fashion, like start reassembling R two. Mm-hmm. And the, so the way that he was disassembled, he is reassembled, and like everything fucking makes sense. Like the way they put it r2 back yeah. together and it's really cool how quickly they can just like all right this part goes here slide this thing on all right there's one magnet droid that's got like both legs and he like walks around like snaps those in and then it's like yeah. grab the head and turn and do this and da, da, da. put them the back one together. detail i like too is that there's some sort of like internal carriage mm-hmm. that slides in first too yeah it's like a rib like cage the inside shell. the outer shell cabinet Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 like stacking two Tupperware tubs into another, you know, yep. like so it just like slide that that was like the one detail I did like seeing the the internals just perfectly glide in, you know. Yeah, that was pretty so, cool. Yeah. I I agree. That 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 was a cool detail. So So, so I, they carry him out, yeah. Yep, they start carrying him out and then Grievous starts to fight Ahsoka. Yes. And he's uh Kind of from here on out, the rest of the fighting, there's a whole bunch of shit talking going on. So yeah, they he's don't stop like, talking. He's like, oh, they sent a fucking child to uh, destroy my ship. And she says something like, oh, later she's got some retort. But he basically walks up and, like, fucking bitch slaps her, punches her in the face or something. She, like, slams against the wall. Right? Yeah. Yep. And uh, then he goes in for the kill of, like, all the fucking clones that are there. Ahsoka jumps back up, fucking defends Rex, like saves his life, and she's like, uh, "Don't wouldn't you prefer prefer a challenge?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah, but that wouldn't be you." Yeah. Uh, Can this... we discuss too that Grievous kind of pulls his lightsaber out of nowhere? By the way. So yeah, I had a note earlier, and he like earlier he pulls back his cloak, and they're just like magnetically attached to his hips. Okay. Which is what it is, because he they're drops, kind of hiding back there. Yeah. yeah, he drops his cloak off, and they're just like on the side of his hips. Yeah, because he kind no, of reaches like, back, and they appear like yeah from the vantage point the camera has. He's just <laughs> yeah, he's reaching out at that love handle, and then he just kind of yeah, it's like he pulls and it like out two of, of them come out too. Yeah, or something. Because yeah. then he like goes like the one hand goes in the other, then suddenly both 
hands have a lightsaber in them. Like, yep. Have and then s- at some point he, he pulls out the um the fine collection line at this point too, right? Uh, I think that I think that might be later. Okay. Well then. So at some point he pulls out the this will make a fine addition to my collection. Yeah, because at the, so at this point R three rolls by. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we cut over to Anakin. So now our A plot is Anakin and R two and um B plot or A prime Ahsoka. plot whatever you want to call it is Ahsoka and Grievous. So Ahsoka yeah. has to fight Grievous. So R yep. three rolls by and is leading essentially is like leading her into a dead end fucking storage room, Mm -hmm. which is kind of what I got out of it. I just thought of this now because earlier I was like earlier when I'm watching this episode, I'm like, all right, why the fuck is our three even present here? But Mm -hmm. our three's present because Ahsoka has to see the betrayal of our three talking to Grievous here in a couple of scenes. Um, so then I was thinking, okay, well, like, why is R3 actually being helpful to Ahsoka? And I think right, that, I th- well, I think what he's doing is funneling her down into, like, a one-in, one-out, you're fucked storage room, right? Yeah. And then Grievous can come in and just fucking dispose of her and be mm-hmm. done. Um, so Anakin's fighting for a two, Ahsoka's hiding, Grievous is talking shit, uh... Ahsoka looks up and force throws a box and it's like yeah. illuminated from like a godly light from the sky. This is like the same <laughs> box that the fucking droid threw in the air and smashed himself in the head with. Mm-hmm. I thought that yeah, was I fucking don't... hilarious. I'm like, Again, Hey, there's the box. Like it's like a payoff <laughs> to a fucking joke that didn't even need to be there. Like it could have yeah. been fucking anything, but Ahsoka looks up and it's like, ah, box. there it is. Bam. So can we get back to the idea that Jedi as a fighting technique like to throw random shit at each other? Uh, so I think what she was doing is like throwing it behind him so that he uh-huh. thought she was behind him, like doing the whole noise distraction thing. Yeah. That's what but I got out of it. But Jedi like, really like throwing shit though. Like dude, between Asajj had... Ventress, like throwing books, right? Like, yeah, she was just like, legit like analog throwing books right she wasn't like force throwing books like she was i think it was a little bit of them. both yeah like either way she was just like oh no i have books to throw at you like i mean if you had the ability to use the force and could levitate things and move them around the room like you were a goddamn physical poltergeist <laughs> would you do it because i know i, I would I mean, wouldn't you try and just at least push them away with the force, maybe? Like, why why use it on books? I just... I don't know. I got... Anyways, move it. So, ah- Ahsoka throws a, a fucking box. Ahsoka throws a box, seemingly for a distraction, which does not fucking distract Dooku at all. Like, it doesn't affect Grievous. anything. But she... Yes, Grievous. <laughs> I always fucking do this. Uh, I Grievous. It's your first time this in this trip, though, so... It is true. And Dooku's not even in this episode, Dooku which is, is funny. not so. even in this episode. Nope. Um, so, Grievous, yeah, distracting Grievous, sorry, you're saying? Which it doesn't even, like, doesn't seem to... Grievous doesn't even seem to notice. No. Right. And then he not just really, kind of no. skulks off and does whatever. At this point, um, Rex calls Ahsoka... And he's like, hey, yeah. there's only two of us left. Like, do we fucking give up and turn tail and run? She's like, no, complete the mission. Like, set the fucking bombs. Like, blow it up. Meet blow me shit. back at the fucking docking bay. Mm-hmm. You know, give me some time. I'll distract Grievous. And Rex is like, no, Ahsoka, like, that's not good for you. And she's like, no, this is the mission. Like, this is what we need to do. Yeah. The mission first. And he's like, yes, sir. Over and out. Whatever. Sounds great. Grievous, Super is, talking, duper. Grievous is talking more shit. Uh, at this point, Goldie betrays Ahsoka. Like, he rolls up, and she's like, Goldie, come here. And he just fucking shines a light on her. Yeah. And then and there's she's like, this... what are you... Like, she for like two seconds, she still doesn't understand it, which yeah, is really fucking annoying. Yeah, she still doesn't get it. Yeah, she's, she's like, what like... are you doing? Why? Why? Like, wh- what is happening? And like, it... are you malfunctioning? Like, what's going on? One real cool fucking thing that happens here 
is that like she goes to Radio Anakin, mm-hmm. and they've got like those wrist communicators where it's like mounted on the top of their fucking wrist, yeah, forearm, the top of their forearm, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And so she like goes to talk to Anakin, chimes it, chimes up Anakin on uh, Nextel Insta Talk or whatever, yeah. and Dooku like fires his lightsaber like Grievous. <laughs> <laughs> Grievous lights up his lightsaber and stabs it like through the um, bookshelf, the yeah. droid shelf or whatever that she's like hiding behind. Mm-hmm. And he clips the top of the yeah. communicator. And it pops off, yeah. Right, and it like pops off. So the communicator's gone. He's like, ha ha, you're stuck with me. Yeah. At this point, we cut back to Anakin for a little bit, right? And he's fighting all these Magna droids. Uh, yes, because R2 kind of is able to get up and then starts putting himself back together. Or, like, he starts, like, tightening Yeah, because they just, the like, connections. they just, like, threw him together real quick. The Magna droid yeah. said, right? And yeah. when Anakin comes out, he's like, hey, fuck you, that's my droid. Mm-hmm. I think the So exact... they kind of drop him and then... They fucking, like, spike him on the ground. Yeah. And, and then uh... start handling Anakin. And, and then, then R2 is like, oh, this is, now's my chance. Like, Yep. He totally opens his fucking chest up and like all of his shit comes out and he starts repairing himself, which I thought yeah. was super fucking awesome. Yeah. Like it, it goes to show how resourceful R2 is, you know, because yeah, absolutely. like the fucking, yeah, it's like a, a spider web of legs that kind of, this is like the, and, this is like the precursor to BB-8 fucking at the beginning of the last Jedi, like, oh, well, I guess I just gotta like fix all of these connections. Oh, yeah. I don't know what like it is, so I'll just plugging like plugging the various plug yeah, everything sparks. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what's happening. It's like all like it, it's a, it's just a branching off claw work of Robo arms that are just coming out of nowhere. But sure, yeah. So one thing that the behind the things behind the scenes thing. <laughs> Uh, that accompanies this episode said, and I think the guy's name is like Killian Plunkett, I mm-hmm. think is like the art director or I don't know. I have it written down. I'm not going to look for it now. I will just double check that and um, give you an update if I'm in- incorrect. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Killian Plunkett is talking about how, like what they wanted to do with R2 in this episode. And they wanted to utilize like all of his equipment. Mm-hmm. And they said, luckily, because they're writing this this shit from from the standpoint that there are not going to be any more movies, right? So he says, yeah. luckily, all of the movies have already come out, so we know all of the attachments that R2 would ever have yeah. or ever need, so we, we were able to put all of them into R2. Mm. Um, naive he was. <laughs> but They're not leaving that money on the table. Right, but so uh, they made sure to include in this episode like every attachment that you've ever seen R2 use anywhere, ever, yeah. in the live action films. Shows up here. Shows up in this episode. Yeah. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, so Anakin, Anakin's fighting. Yeah, you know, Anakin beats yeah. these fucking Magna droids, which is pretty impressive that he beats like all four of them. Yep. Um, by himself. He calls and says... Um, Yo, Twilight, I need an Uber pickup down in the fucking docking bay. Yep. Then R3, at this point, we cut back to other plot. Plot mm-hmm. Ahsoka. R3 and Grievous are, are talking. Ahsoka over here. So, like, she knows for, for reals that um, Goldie is working for the bad dudes. Yep. Big ol' spy. The and Twilight it's like super docks, explicit, yeah. The Twilight docks, everybody fucking runs down there. I think Anakin shows up first, so it's Anakin, then Anakin and R2, and then Anakin and R2 and Rex. Rex and other clone. And one other clone. Which we don't ever get nope. yeah, any we don't, information we, on who the hell that is, yeah. We don't get a name on him, but he does have like some special markings on his helmet, so I assume that mm-hmm. maybe we will learn who he is at some point in time. Okay. Yep. Is my guess. Um, everybody's there except for Ahsoka. Rex informs Anakin that Ahsoka is fighting Grievous, and he's like, "What alone? What the fuck?" Like, 
Yeah. So like, he why goes, would you guys let that happen? Right. Like, hey, we don't. It's just how this is happening. Okay, guys. Like. Yeah. So. He's so like, then, we got to go help her, and then our our three comes flying in. Yep. And he puts this docking bay on lockdown, and yep. then he deploys some vulture soldiers from the ceiling. Uh, and then the uh, techno music comes back. The techno music does come back. It came back earlier, didn't it? Like there was some. I thought you were going to bring it, it up. It was when... present. It was present, but it wasn't like in the forefront per se. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, the techno music definitely carried over from the previous episode, and but in this one, at this scene, the reason I took a note here mm-hmm. is partially because I knew I was gonna bitch about it so much in the last episode, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, uh, at this point, it stands out because it sounds more Matrixy than than it did prior. Like it, it definitely sounds derivative of the. Uh, the uh what is it the lobby fight scene from the first matrix yeah so i know that i do have one note on or i think i have one note on music but i think it's a little bit later which in all actuality we don't have too much more no we're getting there okay it's fucking like on time ish (laughs) it's like i was i'm paging through my notes like looking pages ahead and Uh i flip back to the page i'm on and it's like two lines away from where we're at um I called it Mortal Kombat music. Yeah, that's a good. That's another good analogy. Yeah, it's like, like do, 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 do. yeah, like, yep. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. At this point, we got two battles going on. We got Anakin fighting all these droids. We got Ahsoka fighting Grievous. Uh, and then this is like when the fucking Mortal Kombat music kicks in, and like you know, yeah. it's just ass whooping time. And <laughs> that's what we got to do. We got to whoop some ass, like. I think the Mortal Kombat music is more appropriate for like the Anakin droid situation, which kind of fits. Like I'm cool with it. Yeah, it's all right. It's, like it's, it's not know. as jarring it, as it was in the previous episode, and we don't have an Amon break again. So at least there's that. So right. So as uh, Ahsoka is fighting Grievous, he fucking totally gets her lightsaber and has her fucking choked out. Like I'm gonna kill you. And I think this is where the fine collection to fine addition uh, to my collection yes probably okay. comes up because he's getting that ready to sense. take a soak out fully yeah uh-huh. yep so your lightsaber will make a fine collection uh, addition to my collection yeah yep uh yep. T- that makes sense so then we cut back to anakin mm-hmm. and anakin's like yo captain captain rex like fucking you still got that detonator like do what we're here to do man like blow the fucking blow the fucking thing yeah and Rex is like, but we're on the base that we're, yeah. I'm going to blow up. And Anakin says, uh, leave the details for me to worry about or some shit yeah. like that. And they're like, okay. So, boom. Sure. He fucking detonates. At this point, the blast distracts Grievous enough that Ahsoka can rotate her lightsaber a little bit. And, yeah. And fucking cut his hand Takes off. Takes off his hand, yeah. Like, so it cuts his hand off, which releases the grip on her throat. Mm-hmm. So she's able to scurry away and she like knocks the shelves over and then does this cool thing where she like scurries up the shelves and is like running along the top of them as they're falling. Yeah. yeah she's then, like riding the wave of shelves. Right. Like she's riding that cor- the, the crest as it goes across. Like. Right. <laughs> yep. And then uh, she, uh, she, she does like a shimmy into a vent, right? Like, yep. Into a vent, like saved by a vent. Mm-hmm. And then uh, she pops her head out and totally fucking does the Indiana Jones grabbing my hat trick with her lightsaber. Yep. Forces it back up to her. Forces it back Force up grab. to her. Yep. Um, Force grab. Grievous does do some damage to the the ventilation shaft that she's in. Yeah, but, she's crawling um, out, and there's a few jabs. This part definitely kind of... Jabs and slashes. Yep. Yeah, jabs and slashes... You know, this is kind of something we've seen like an um a slightly different version we would have seen in um like Jurassic Park when the Velociraptor kind of pops I his was head in. Totally thinking Jurassic Park, so yep. I I agree with you hundred percent. Yep. So that's you know, crawling in the vent, that's kind of like the go to uh I'm trying to think there's there's been other mo- the the only other movie where I can think of like a stab of s- sorts like that would be like the first Silent Hill movie, maybe. They're trapped in an elevator. Yeah, yeah, I've got a real clear vision of something where there's like somebody has to 
cup of hand over another person's mouth because there's like a physical puncture like through into yeah. whatever they're doing but um i can't place where it's at yeah as to the specifics yeah i yeah i i feel like stabby things and avoiding stabby things in a different thing is it's been done a few times so it's definitely been it's, done often yeah so it's it's somewhere I, we just can't pinpoint it exactly so it works pretty well here it's got kind of an abrupt ending to it because it's um like grievous really does just kind of like couple slashes and before before <laughs> or after ahsoka like reaches out and re-grabs her lightsaber i feel like it's after but uh a couple yeah, slashes she grabs the saber she starts heading in and then he's like it's slicing like and dicing slash slice slashy slash fuck but it. what's weird is why doesn't he like slash a hole into right, right? anakin's like, been cutting holes and shit like all episode why doesn't he just cut the whole fucking thing off yeah that's that's kind of what confused me because like there's enough slashes there that it should have weakened whatever Ahsoka was on, uh-huh. and she should have fallen through at some point. You know? I th- I think one she's small. I think two. Uh, but is it? Gonna do you hold see up, like the like... slashes from inside the vent? Yeah. So did Grievous like throw his fucking lightsaber at it? I I don't. I was trying to figure this out too. Like I was I. What I imagine is, like, wherever she was headed, he kind of followed and, like... He tried to cut her off? It was, like, there was a more like, shallow spot for him to stand on or something. Like, figuratively and literally tried to cut her yeah. off? Yeah, so, like, maybe there were, like, some boxes underneath the vent or something that we didn't see because... Oh, there's definitely boxes. It's an episode Yeah, there are boxes around. Ones, so there are boxes. So, yeah, exactly. So he just jumped up on a box or, like, there was a still standing shelf that he could make his way onto to then start stabbing into it because the, the stabs go deep too they're not like shallow right they basically go from bottom to top of the entire vent she's in yep so i i know I, I got nothing though we never really see outside of it yeah we just see the stabbies and then yeah and then so at this point um grievous does his thing that he does which is he fucking runs away yep he runs back to his fucking ship and uh, does his little cartwheel into it. Mm-hmm. Every time he gets into this thing, he does yep. a cartwheel into it. Rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, at and then this Ahsoka point, kills the vulture droids. Yeah, at this point. She Ahsoka, jumps out of the vent. Yeah. She cuts a hole and jumps out of the vent. And yep. there's one thing I don't like about this is like, she starts at, from her perspective, like nine o'clock, from our perspective, like, Three o'clock. Three. Yeah. And then... It's a perfect circle. It is a perfect circle, which I'm fine with that. Yep. <laughs> but by the I time she I just feel like there'd gets, be some resistance to fuck you up in that perfect circle. That's all. Yeah. By the time she gets back around, uh-huh. she reaches out and, like, grabs onto the side of it. And, like, 90% of this thing is still, like, glowing red hot on the fucking... Oh, on the rim of... On the edge of where she cut through this fucking yeah. thing. But she, like, grabs onto it and then, like, hops out. Yep. All right. So she hops out. She she helps finish um, the fight with the vulture droids. She helps finish Mortal Kombat is what I was looking for. Yep. Um, So she's, like, back-to-back with Anakin. They're fighting. Anakin says something to Rex. Oh, no. Rex says, yo, there's some fuel cells over here. Yep. Anakin's like, all right, cool, and like grabs one with the force and like flings it over to where the rest of the enemies are. And Rex shoots it, Rex fucking shooting it. End of it blows up. End of fucking battle. Yep, that's um, what we got. R two opens the fucking doors. Everything's good. Um, until I know I'm missing some. Okay, so as soon as like Ahsoka's fight is over, yeah, then we have another fight to replace it. Yes. Yeah. So what I don't even remember exactly how this happens, but so then Anakin sends Anakin sends R2 to figure out how to open the doors. And yeah. he's like, see if there's a control panel outside right. that'll do it. So yeah. then um R two fucking I don't know, finds a fucking door, goes outside. Yeah, like, onto really like sure. a and then he's like on a catwalk sort. and runs to the other end of it. Yeah. 
this is similar to uh, Jen Urso when she's got to like realign the satellite dish. Yes. Yep. So she's got to like run the down to the walkway. other end of the catwalk and like fucking yeah. do something. So yeah. So this is what R2 does. He runs down to the other end of the catwalk. Now, the title of this episode is called Duel of the Droids. And up yeah. to this point, we have not seen a duel of any droids. Yeah, not between droids anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We've seen lots of duels involving droids. But not duel of droids, plural. Yeah, with each other. Correct. Yeah. But so, that's, that's exactly what we get. It's we're fucking nineteen minutes into a twenty two minute episode. <laughs> yeah. That is named Duel of the Droids before we see droids dueling. And yep. um, And it's like the weirdest duel too, because it's two astromechs. Yeah, so the way that they fight each other is kinda like they like hiss at each other and yeah. then they get out a bunch like a bunch of their attachments and then they both shoot like electricity at each other and try to yeah. shock each other. And then and R two always goes for his, uh, his go to so, move is uh spraying some oil. Yeah, he does spray right. some oil. Like, I feel like that's his go to move. You know. It it is, and it it works. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that distracts R three for a little bit, and then yeah, R two is able to open the fucking doors. Our heroes all get on the twilight. They're able to exit from uh the dock sky bed. top sky top station yep right anakin immediately jumps in his fighter and he's yeah. like i'm going to get r2 like fucking go i'll yeah. catch up don't worry about it so then we cut back and we get to see the end of this the end of this duel and r2 fucking pushes r3 off of the catwalk mm-hmm. he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking murder you i'm gonna i'm gonna push you off here and yeah. r3 shoots a suction cup like onto r2's chest or face or something like that yeah and so he's like you know if r2 keeps pushing he's gonna go overboard also yeah like um, r3 is just hanging on like he's leaning off the catwalk but uh-huh. but they're, like they're attached he, via yeah. tow cable essentially. yeah he's hanging on yeah he's hanging on via the cable so at this point, what R2 does is light on fire the oil. The oil that, that has been has yeah. been sprayed all over the place. And then R3... Th- so, it burns down toward R3. And you don't see him, like, engulfed in flame or anything. But he's definitely, like, screaming in fucking flaming yeah. misery. Yeah, he's like, fire bad, no. He's like, ah, no, ah, fire. Uh, why? Yeah, so again, it brings up, like, what is he feeling? What? what, Like... So to make matters worse, then R2, like, whips his fucking saw out and, like, cuts through this fucking cable. Yeah. And then R3 goes down. Like, R3 fucking falls off the edge and can't even, like, tumble down to destruction, like, death peacefully. He gets hit by, like... A vulture droid or something that's fucking flying by. So yeah, and his fucking <laughs> arms rip off. Yeah, just complete smattering of just R3. smashed. Our our three's not coming back. He's done no. though. We're yeah, that's the last we'll be seeing of him for sure. Like there's no coming back from that. Um, yep. So then Anakin comes by, picks up R two and the fighter. Yeah. Then there's like there's just like this weird like epilogue scene i guess if you call it where like obi-wan they're, is like communicating in like, yeah they're somewhere i don't know if they're on the twilight or if the twilight is like docked on a good guy star destroyer or something but like all conflict has ended and everybody's able to breathe for a little bit and yeah. um anakin's talking to obi-wan and obi-wan is fucking lecturing anakin like big surprise yep. like so, you risked everyone for a droid yep that wasn't that important like you know like clones died right (laughs) clones died and then it obi-wan hangs up and is like i don't know what to fucking say to you at this point anymore right and then ahsoka has a thing to say and is like you know like honestly i side with obi-wan on this like i don't know why we risked all of this for this droid yep and then it ends with like Anakin smiling. It's like, 
you know, he's more than a droid. He's a friend. Yep. And then loud music. Yep. Cue loud music and a show. <laughs> um, I like how that's our thing to sh- to very abruptly explain that this is the end of the episode. <laughs> cue like, loud music. Loud music. <laughs> probably so, blowing out some speakers when i yell that into this mic so yeah all right yeah, it's fine it's fine i got have good luck on. i'm good over here so um yeah it's I think you'll be you'll be all right you're an auditory wizard <laughs> so, I, I guess i <laughs> just moving some sliders around some digital uh levelers around so yeah i don't really know i don't know how all that stuff works that's yeah, magic but, pure magic it's time for the behind the curtain section of the podcast i have at it i have no technical ability to do anything so i am reliant a hundred percent on lorenzo being able to fucking pull all this shit together (laughs) yeah uh i can talk about stuff i can formulate many opinions some of which make sense some which don't some of which are entertaining some of which aren't but as far as the technical aspect of all of this shit, anything that I know, I've learned from Lorenzo along the way. Which, uh, let's remind people, because I don't think we've talked about this a lot, and people might have forgotten, if you're listening, Kevin and I are not in the same state whatsoever. We're not in the same time zone. Nope. So, he sends his audio over through the interwebs. I grab it, then I, sl- I, I have to do some work to put these together and line them up and make sure... Yeah, and I would imagine it's pretty out. hard for Lorenzo to like just listen to some random audio recording with a whole bunch of uh, empty silence gaps in there and then formulate whatever he's going to say and uh, speak in those gaps. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't record the same time as Kevin. No, no we no, record no. separately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Completely part, so. Part of that's a lie. Yeah. But uh, no, uh, so, you know. Miracles of Skype. Yes, the miracles of technology. Skype. technology. And, it, I mean, to to be fair, to give you credit, I mean, bef- as we had like a what a six month gestation period of like talking about it, talking about it, yeah, a few action items for sure, right? Because one of the big things I definitely mentioned, but you were like completely on board for, was how we recorded the show, mm-hmm. um, because for my day job. We used to record people via Skype. Yep. And I, I explained to you that, that that audio quality is not pleasing to my ears personally. Right. So that we would record separately and then yeah. uh, combine these audios together later. Yeah. And it was basically like uh, use this thing or this thing. And yeah, um, get, I suggested a few mics and he picked one up off of amazon or whatever right yeah i think it's actually like walmart yeah it was basically like cooler. google i had i had an idea of what i wanted mm-hmm. so i was telling lorenzo like hey i'm looking for for this and he said you know check check this out i use what am i using i'm using a snowball it's a, black it's a yeti. ice mic yeah it's uh the brand name is yeti which i think that's the over yeah uh no is it Yeti? I thought it was Snowball. Because the, there's a it, there's an overall brand. I think that that model is the Snowball. Okay. But but Yeti, I believe, because Yeti makes the uh shit. What is it called? Yeti Blue. Yep. Is this it blue? is a no, blue. 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 This, blue mic. There we go. This is a blue. Yeti. Mic. Yeti blue. is the model. Blue is the the name brand. Um, yep. That is correct. The manufacturer. Yep. I was trying. I I knew I was getting that mixed up. So yeah. So I I threw those ideas at you, and then I told you what program to use and and i it's yeah. been working we've only I, had like one episode kind of get fucked up for some reason i never figured out why and it never happened again yeah like, so other than that it's been pretty cool um anyway so yeah that's i've got one more comment on yeah. this episode before we can wrap everything up yeah go for it so from the point that rex hits destroy button mm-hmm. on the base uh some bombs go off right and at this point you can we can see that and i guess we didn't we definitely didn't make this clear in the episode this base is like in atmosphere of what's supposed to be a moon or we think it's supposed to be a moon yeah some celestial body 
it is not like on the ground. No. It is in the air. So think Cloud City. Yep, definitely floating like Cloud City. Even a little it's it's almost shaped like Cloud City, just more It's a in sphere. between like Yeah, it's, it's a more sphere spherical. with a whole bunch of fucking antennas sticking out in all directions, including yeah. down. Um yes. so think round ball with a whole bunch of antennas floating like Cloud City. So yeah. like Cloud City and Death Star had a baby, sort of, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because, like, visually speaking, it reminded me sort of, too, in a way of, like, E.T.'s ship that he gets onto right yeah, at the end. I, I can totally see that, absolutely. Right. That's that's the visual. I, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that was definitely the, when they, they showed the wide shot of it, that's, that's the first kind of thought that came to my head, was E.T.'s silver ship. Yeah, I'll have to tweet out a picture of this. Yeah. I will put so, that on my list of things to do. But okay. So what my point was was from when when he hits the boom button mm-hmm. to when they escape. Yeah. In in showtime it is three minutes and fifteen seconds. Okay. Okay. So I was trying to figure out like how far this thing would have fallen. And of course, yeah. you to to find an accurate rate, you need to know the gravity, you need to know the mass of the object, you need to yeah. know uh, air resistance, a couple other things, right? Yeah, to like find terminal velocity too, and all that jazz, like right. But for just a generic um, equivalent, we'll say, mm-hmm. I think I think what I found was like terminal velocity of the human body is like a thousand feet. For every six seconds. Okay. Which is like super fast. Yeah. That seems way too fast as the math is working in my head. Maybe not. But, um. Well, because if you're jumping out of a plane at, say. So it's like. T- it's like, like. It's like 200, 250 right. miles an hour. Right. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. I mean, you fall fast. You fall fast enough that when you when you jump out of a plane, and I can say this from experience, you do not feel like you're falling. You feel like you're floating or yeah. you're flying, like yeah. going up. Like it's it's a very bizarre feeling. Well, um, part of it is because you don't have a frame of reference around you, right? Right. Like that's. That's the one thing with, say, certain drop rides. And there aren't a lot of drop rides that have a pure drop anymore. Right. Right. Because of, uh, say, like Tower of Terror in Disney World. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, it's not just a, a drop. It's a push down. Does that make sense? Okay. Is that so, so that they can... You're ex- is that so that you can reach a cer- certain speed faster? Yes. Than so you're falling just relying faster on than gravity. gravity alone. Okay. Yeah, you're falling faster than gravity. Um, a lot of the drop rides in various parks around the country. Uh, so, Power Tower in Cedar Point, Lex Luthor's Drop of Doom at Six Flags Magic Mountain north of LA. Um, those are drop rides that you know, like they'll pull you up and then they'll drop you. Mm-hmm. But it's actually a cable that's pulling you down faster than gravity. Oh, how about that? So, so next time you go on one of these rides, the way to know you're falling faster than gravity is if you're in a over shoulder harness and you kind of hit that. Uh huh. Then you're falling faster than gravity. Right. Right. If because it was, otherwise you wouldn't be falling you just at the same speed with, as your shoulder harness. As the harness, yeah. You just right. be floating with. Um, the one ride I can think of that gives you, uh, a nice pure zero G feeling. Cause Mm -hmm. yeah. So a good zero G ride would be, um, if you're West coast, six flags, magic mountain, the Superman ride shoots you out zero to 100, then it goes straight up and then you hit a maximum point at which gravity then pulls you back. So for about two seconds, you're floating there. Yeah. We got a, uh, uh, it used to be called Mr. Freeze here in Ew. St. Louis. Yeah. Six Flags over Mid America. Six mm-hmm. Flags St. Louis, whatever it is. Um, 
Yeah, that I don't one know. It used to be with. one, and then like they changed it to the other, and I don't know what the name of it is. It's, it's Six interesting. Flags. Yeah, because it's not like Six Flags lost the WB license or anything. They still have it. So no, so right, so um, I don't know what the name of the park is. It's one of the two, but uh, I know it used to be called Mister Freeze. I don't know if it's still called Mister Freeze. Hmm. I think it is. Because they have, like, Mr. Freeze, Batman, fucking Joker, and, like, Joker used to be something else, but then they, like, renamed all the rides, or a lot That's of the so rides, yeah. into um, fucking DC characters, right? Yeah. So, but the ride's still there. I just don't know yeah, what Yeah, just the, under a different it may or, slash name. It may have a different moniker. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so... Um, but it does the same thing where it like you fire out like super fucking fast and then you like go up, come back down and like loop the other direction and you go straight up. Yeah. Yep. There are a lot it, of rides like that. It reverses yeah. and goes back into the fucking tunnel. Yep. So it's like that. Yeah. That little moment at the top there, you know, where you, you're getting a pure zero G experience. Yep. Uh, um, so, yeah. For, uh, Superman. Magic Mountain's the big one I can think of. Uh, if you're a Cedar Point fan, twi- uh, uh, Wicked Twister. Wicked I'm a, Twister. Wicked Twister, which is a Boston accent. But uh, no, I'm a huge roller coaster fan. Can you tell? <laughs> so I, I love because I, I love that zero G feeling. You know, I've never yep. been skydiving, but that's the thing. It's like when you're on a roller coaster, you're close enough to the ground mm-hmm. that you have that. Uh, you have that frame of reference. It's always about frame of reference. If you study mm-hmm. physics, if you study physics, you know, it's all about the frame of reference, right? So it's like, right, like, like, the, earth is, like the earth is hurtling through space at like 17,600 miles an hour. Yeah. And then but you have to remember there too, like, is gravity and other things in the, in our celestial experience are moving also. Yeah. So our frame of reference is that we don't feel like we're moving because we're all moving as one unit with the Earth. Right. Right. Um, we kind of, we talked about this two or three episodes ago when you discussed jumping out of one of a character jumped out of a ship and you you wondered about how you could jump forward on. Was oh like yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, wasn't it Grievous jumping from train to train? Maybe so. Yeah, some sort of train system. I was trying to figure out. Okay, yeah. so Grievous was on the rocket. Oh, that's sleds. right. Is that what they yes. called it? Rocket sleds uh, or rocket I trains for, or something? Yeah. like Yeah, in it in that big atrium of right subway inside the system thingies. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's right. And that's so right. he was jumping forward on. The rocket sled. It yes. was. It's not a rocket sled. It's called rocket something else. Yeah, I, I, I forgot. Like it just, was. We called it like the space L train or the space subway or whatever. Yeah, essentially. But he so, was able to jump forward like three cars. Yeah. So I I think I was trying to bring it up then. It's it's again because you know uh, other than having to account for wind resistance, um, from his frame of reference, he's already moving with the train. mm Hmm. So, you know, if you if you stopped that train and just put a fan on him, it generally has the same effect of him just jumping forward, right? Right. So, like, you jump forward in your bedroom mm-hmm. is the same as you jumping from, if you were in a convertible, from the back seat to the front seat. Right. Right. So, like, even if that convertible is moving 60 miles an hour, you already have the frame of reference that you are moving you are also moving 60 miles an hour with the So right your acceleration is 60 you know if you're if normally you can jump 1 mile an hour forward yeah when you're traveling 60 miles an hour and you jump then you jump 61 miles an hour forward exactly. but you're already yeah. moving 60 yeah yeah so you're moving ahead so yes. anyways um we you were talking about something. The, yes, this my whole, whole thing dropping. Sorry, my let's whole get back point to of all this was uh, we're using an estimated speed of a thousand square or a thousand feet drop every six seconds, right? Yeah. So for a total of three minutes and fifteen seconds, this thing is going to drop. This base that they're on drops six and a quarter miles. Okay. So. So it's way way up there in the atmosphere way up there in the atmosphere 
and I mean, they are well, jumping onto this thing with no breathing apparatus or other. <laughs> and so then I was thinking, okay, maybe it is a situation like Cloud City where it's on like a gas giant or something. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that they like when they point it out and there's all the fucking rubbish on the screen. They're like, it's on this moon here on the moon. Yeah, which um, for a and, moon to be big enough to collect just the gases and not like coalesce, right into rocks, the planet into gravity. Yeah, it, I mean, it looks like be. a terrestrial um moon. Moon, yeah. I mean, it looks like yeah. a rock-based moon. To have an atmosphere big enough, though, because like, well, well, what, like from every, like we're all you and I are both closer to outer space than we are to each other right like right you only have to go 50 miles up to be considered in outer space right right um so you know like it, it could if the moon is big enough you know and it has atmosphere that might extend at least 50 miles up you know to fall yeah. six miles isn't too outlandish yeah yeah and we don't even see it hit the ground. This is just from the point that they get off the fucking thing. Oh yeah, and you can't they even see the ground. Fly away, from there, and it's still so. going. Yeah, it's so um, it's, it's high, it's, it's high orbit. You know, it's whatever. I just thought I would bring up the fact that in that time period they fell six and a quarter miles. So, hey, hey, hey uh, however, I'm however glad you, you want to take that. I'm glad you did the so. math. Uh, it's not the most outlandish thing that's ever happened in a movie. Just definitely another not. site. Definitely, you know, like furious. Is it Furious Six with the plane? Furious Five or Furious Six? Like, I didn't. I the last one I saw uh, was the second one. Man, come on, man! I, I think and we've already had this discussion, haven't we? Like, I believe on, so. In a recording, it's not because I don't <sighs> want to watch them. It's because I take my time to watch other things, They're like so the good. Clone Wars, and to figure out how far the fuck, how far a fucking space station dropped when. Um, they had a little blasty blast on board. Well, just to give you full spoilers that don't spoil anything because the episode is so fucking hilariously fun, or the the, the movie is hilariously fun. I I, I want to say it's Furious Six. Um, there's an end scene where the bad guy gets on a plane, like a big old army cargo plane, and that yep. thing is starting to take off. And of course, our Fast and Furious crew are getting in the cars and they're gonna try and stop it and they're jumping from the fucking car onto the plane they're having fights on the plane the scene itself if you pay close attention loops back on itself so it's like things are happening on the port side wing at the same time things are happening on the starboard wing right right things are happening at the fucking back end of the plane right but somebody still did the math the scene takes place over like 15 fucking minutes Mm -hmm. while the plane is barreling down a runway trying to take off that's a long ass fucking for 15 minutes so somebody did the math where it's like if a plane i I don't remember the exact math i'm just making up numbers from this point on right because you got to be at like 157 knots or something i don't know yes exactly and and all that shit confuses me and like nautical miles when when it comes to water some yeah, somebody made the determination that the, that runway would be about 30 miles long. So <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so. And it seems like that. it should be longer than that because that would be going two miles an hour. And I'm pretty sure uh, that a plane has to go faster than two miles an hour. Maybe. I, to get the yeah. wind resistance to get off the fucking ground. I don't fucking know. Was, I don't know. Or the all pres- I know pressure is differential. Dis- I, don't, I don't know science terms. Dis- despite that, that scene is a fucking masterclass in putting together a ridiculous action scene so like i thoroughly enjoy it but moving on yeah i was gonna say so so we know that um that you like fast and furious yep we got that we know we know how far this thing has dropped in the (laughs) three minutes and 15 seconds of screen time that it took from from blast to take off also just to detail it i do like the idea that I don't know how they got from one end of the station to the other, but the blasts start at the bottom, so that's the explanation we have that Anakin has enough time to kind of go uh-huh. save all the various pieces that he that's, needs to before they blast off, you know? Yep. Because that was a good, good detail. Point. 
where they're like, you know, when he's like, don't worry, leave the details to me. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking? Uh, okay, the blast, I guess, is at the bottom. Uh, sure, cool. Yeah, and like not, it kind of spreads up, whatever. I'm not really sure. It's fine. But you're saying, things, some, you're saying yeah. some positive things, so why don't you give me your thumbs up, thumbs down? I'm still going to give this one a thumbs down. Okay. It's not as hearty as the last episode. Okay. It's still a solid thumbs down for me. Mm-hmm. Um, like we've talked about it. There, there are good parts to this episode. Uh, again, the, the details of R2 getting pulled apart, th- at least that happened, but there are still threads and there's still odd pacing issues that happen in this episode. But at the very least, this is right. a more straightforward episode than, than downfall of a droid, uh, that, I, uh, everybody keep that in mind because that will kind of be my new low benchmark at the very least. We have found something that you like less than the theatrical release. Yes, that was the so new. that's amazing. Yeah, that, that was the original low point. Uh, downfall of a droid for sure from here on out is my new low benchmark. I am totally going to agree with you on the low benchmark with downfall of a droid. Mm-hmm. I am going to disagree with you, and uh, surprising even to myself, I am giving Duel of the Droids a thumbs up. Okay. As I was... So, last week when we talked about downfall of a droid, I was like, this episode is rubbish. Like, there's so many, so many things that I didn't like about it. I didn't like that it felt like one extended montage with with dialogue, right? Yeah, there's no structure, yeah. Right. And so I wholeheartedly expected this episode to fall into the same trap. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but it didn't. So I knew what would happen in this episode, essentially. Like, I knew mm-hmm. what the duel of the droids was. I knew R2 yeah. was going to fucking fight another droid. And yeah. I knew that R2 was going to win, right? Mm-hmm. Watching it, I was like 50-50. I'm like, all right, this is okay. It's like, whatever. There's a couple yeah. cool things, this and that. Um, as we were talking about this, like, I was more and more excited to talk about certain things in this episode than I was to complain and bitch about things. Yeah. So at that point, you know, I'm thumbs up on it. Yeah, like I said, this this one, I th- I think in knowing that they want to wrap things up in a certain way, mm-hmm. you know, we kind of get back into a normal beginning, middle, and end structure. Right. Which is weird because I feel like they could have, instead of doing a two-parter, everything from the last episode basically could have been scrapped or compressed into about two minutes. Yeah. I, I'll... I'll... I'll take that and I'll raise you. Like everything from the last episode could have been in the fucking newsreel. Of yes, basically, yeah. Just give me a couple liners which, on which how is exactly R2 what got. happened in this episode. Is we got a newsreel comprising yeah. of the things that happened in the last episode, and yeah. we don't we don't have to fucking watch it. We don't have to fucking deal with it. Yeah, like yeah, done. So, Here's what happened. Moving forward. Yeah. The betrayal of, like, R3 holds no more or less weight in the context of downfall of a droid, you know? No. Like, if, if anything, he was just annoying in the last episode, so it made me... I mean, he's the bad guy, so I guess that's a good thing, but, like, I was just happy to be rid of him, you know? So, so are we going to call Goldie the bad guy in this episode as well? I would. I would. I would make him the the main bad guy of this okay. one. Okay. Because Grievous is already kind of like your overall... He's like the overall big baddie, right? Yeah, he has come up... He has not actually come up as a direct bad guy, per se. Yeah. I would consider R3 the the main antagonist at the very least, right? Yep, I just um, have it labeled bad guy. Yeah, so that... that I would throw R3 into that bucket. Um, but yeah, so again, at least with this episode, there's some structure, but... <laughs> When, when, when we're coming off that an episode so bad, I'm just like it has a structure. <laughs> like, yeah, I was, yeah. I like I said, I surprised myself that, yeah. um, that I gave this a thumbs up. Um, yeah, and I, I understand your points. I I have no argument against you on that one. You know, just, uh-huh. yeah, so it kind of is what it is. 
yeah, it's not a, it's not an awful episode. I just I just didn't like it. It just it was just a lot of filler to me. Like these two episodes for sure kind of feel the most fillerish so far. Yeah. Yeah, you because know, at least like I don't with, disagree. Yeah, with the other ones, at least like we got like an understanding of like how the clones work and blah blah blah. blah. In this one, it's just like this weird random fucking adventure of watching Anakin not Anakin be a good general kind of bromance with R two. Yeah, but he's just he's actively showing how shitty of a general he is. You know, like yeah, I'm not really just, sure. Yeah, and then again it. Looping so back to the beginning, the, the fortune cookies make no fucking sense. Would you say no? I I totally agree. the The fortune cookies. Don't yeah, let's loop back to that real quick. Yeah, the the fortune cookies are. They're like they try to have this whole thing, especially with the last fucking sentence of this two part. Like that's that's why the fortune cookie is what it is. Yeah, that's why they, we're talking about friends and both of these fucking fortune cookies because. Yeah. Because we took 44 minutes and some change out of our lives to fucking delve a little deeper into this relationship that R2 or that Anakin has with R2. Yeah. It's something that we already knew. It's not a story that needed to be told. It doesn't. We didn't need it strengthened in this way. Like if you're going to try and like backfill in that relationship, there are a lot better ways to do it than having like, and, and also there are, separated most of the time so we don't right like if, you, if you're going to try and explain how deep their friendship goes have them do something together right don't spend two episodes of them apart and then be right. like well that's why they're best friends right like we didn't we don't what no that we saw them separated the whole time we we have seen the lengths anakin will go to mm-hmm. to save a friend but it doesn't explain anything about the friendship right so, so we know they're bad fortune cookies. Would you consider uh, Anakin's actions in these two episodes to make him a bad general? Yes, absolutely. What, what about a bad Jedi? Yes. Oh, definitely. What about a bomb bad Jedi? Because that's what we got coming up next Jesus. week. Jesus. Uh, yes. All yes. He is just bad at everything, and it's confusing. It's very confusing. Next week, we will have to discuss uh, what exactly Bombad means, if it's good or bad, or just Bombad. Oh, so, uh, Episode 16 coming up next week, Bombad Jedi. And I'm going to make a prediction that we may see um, a familiar Gungan in that one. So, A, a Gungan at least, probably. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to guess. Uh, Who but, could it be? Anyways, who could it be? That being said, let's say that's what we got. Yeah. yeah, let's say thanks to Lindsay is the strange, strange fantasy, fantasy me music at gmail.com. Yep. Thanks to Kevin Warren on uh, Twitter at they call me K Dub. Thanks to all you yep. guys for listening, Lorenzo. Thanks you. Thanks. Thanks. Plural. <laughs> Man. Uh, yeah. If you need to reach out to us for any reason, uh, not the nerds podcast at gmail.com. Uh, Kevin's in control of the Twitter at not the nerds and on Facebook uh, we have a Facebook page up that's at not the nerds podcast on Facebook if you are still there and have not jumped ship yet in the light of all the shit on Facebook uh, I don't know about any of the shit on Facebook because no, I'm not worry. on Facebook uh, well your information is safe the rest of ours is not yeah. Uh, <laughs> So you can shoot me an email and let me know what's going on on Facebook if you'd like. Yeah. And that would be uh, someone please explain nothing it to Kevin. podcast at gmail.com. So, yep. um, and uh, like and subscribe, please, or review us. I guess you can't really like us on uh, on iTunes, Google Play, uh, TuneIn, Stitcher. I believe we are also available on maybe, yeah, oh, Stitcher. What are they calling sure. iTunes now? Uh, uh, Apple, Apple podcast, Apple podcast. Apple, yeah. I don't, it's, I don't it's, fucking know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's whatever Apple ecosystem you're on, you know, I just so. hit the purple note button on my phone or whatever it is. Yeah. It's, get. it's all in there. So, so. yeah. All so, right. you know, just let us know what you think. And then, um, yeah. I, when's this up? Sub- this episode comes out 
This is episode would come out after Solo, right? Duel of the Droids think... comes out May 30th. Yeah. What are you talking so... about? It comes out today. We are recording this May 30th. <laughs> yes, exactly. This is a live podcast. We just blasted out, everybody. That's right. So We're in your so... phone right now. Yeah. As we discussed last week, we'll have another kind of throw out there into the universe. We are thinking about recording other things as well. So... You know, if you're listening, just kind of let us know how you feel about that. If we throw a, a few extra episodes regarding, you know, this theatrical release of a Star Wars movie that we have coming up this month. And uh, maybe some other fun nerd news things of some sort, such as Infinity War. or In- Infinity! And, yeah, so... You know, maybe Kevin and I will talk about other things besides Clone... We'll still talk about Clone Wars on we the same schedule. We are definitely going to still talk about Clone Wars and keep it yeah. on a schedule. And, and Yeah, we'll still stick with the schedule, but in terms yeah. of throwing other content in there, and, and I know we take up a lot of your time already each week, and we're getting longer, but, um, but you know, there's, there's other things, more current things to talk about, and Kevin and I would also like to talk about those things, wouldn't we? Right? Yes? Absolutely. So, Couldn't have said kinda, it better myself. Just planting that seed, so if you see a couple extra bonus episodes in a, in a single week, then you know, just be on the lookout for that. But anyways, yeah, so I think that's what we have for Duel of the Droids. We'll be back for Bombad Jedi next week. Any, any last words there, Kevin? Anything that's, else? That's all I got, so uh, all we'll right, see you next week. Here. Getting out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye.